Hello, everyone. Today I'm with Arden Walker. He's a Colorado defensive end. He's came on before for an interview when he was coming out of high school from Cherry Creek committed to Missouri. So now I'm happy to have him back on again. So thank you for joining me again. What's going on, bro? How you been, man? Been doing well. How about you? I can't complain, you know. You've been getting that starting, starting at the college football level. Man, I'm, sure I'm trying to move into that role, bro. That's I'm going to go fight for it this spring. So I'm even trying to. I'm about to. I'm going to claim it, you know. You got that. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so with my first question, what what did you learn from this past season and how would you say things went? <laughs> um, Honestly, bro, I really learned about like a rebuild just with a, a organization. Um, I'll say like just for us, we definitely just seen what the potential we have and then just like what we have, like what we – we're capable of doing just moving into these next few seasons and stuff. And like, really guys really want to do this. And I said, yeah, basically I said, we just build our team, bro. And I, I think it just started something special. And I, um, I said, there's some ups and downs, of course, but I said, I feel like we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the program only had like one win a season ago and now you guys yeah. already upgraded to four. And like you said, you know, and I said, and that's somewhere to start. I mean, and obviously like guys ha and people around like the world just had high expectations and stuff. And I mean, we did too, but at the end of the day, like when reality set in and stuff, I'm like looking at it in hindsight, like we did more than what's expected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you, the Pac 12 this year is loaded. So like, it was, def it was definitely a, a joust, bro. And I said, it was a gauntlet and, uh, just especially for our schedule too. Like it was, it was harder than most, uh, college teams in the, uh, this past season so like it wasn't easy like we going back to back or playing like top ranked teams in the country like uh, weeks at a time so it's like man we also were just just trying to figure everything out and I I, I uh, commend all my guys and my teammates just for sticking together and wanting to fight to the end and it's like uh, I think I think y'all seen that when we just was on tv like everybody was fighting we were playing hard so it's just like obviously some things that we still have to do just down the stretch but we're gonna get that handled we're just starting so yeah, you guys battled every game, you know, competed in the conference. And like you said, you're just starting. This is the first year of that rebuild, and yeah. you guys heading in the right direction. Exactly. At Colorado, you obviously had lots of press around all of your games. How do you handle that? Um, I will say, I don't know, maybe if it was like a a system for doing this, but I, I said during the summer, like obviously when they were recording all our workouts and everything, and just like walking around, just simply recording what's been going on at our uh, at school and what we were doing during the summer. I feel like that got us ready for the season. Um, like I think like when we we did um, get into the season with all the the media attention and like all the stars coming to the games and all that stuff. I mean, for at least for me, I was like, I mean, obviously it's cool. Still, like you know, you seeing like the baby or uh, yeah. Jacquees at the uh, at our, one of our games. Who else? There's so many people, but. I'm like, bro. I mean, yeah, that's cool to see. At the end of the day, I think they still made us like realize like what the our end mission was and what our end goal was. And I mean, that's to win. But you know, um, I, it was cool. But at the same time, like I felt like they got prepared for it. So like when they did come around and all that stuff, it was nothing really. Like, I said the camera's been in our face all the time, and like the guys that said they really want all the, the glitz and glamour and stuff. There's gonna be cameras everywhere. You go to the next level. You, people will be asking for interviews and asking for like just autographs and pictures and everything. Yeah, you know, like. It's the whole nine, bro. But yeah, I think I say they got us ready for that, like based on our training in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with them already recording in the summer, you know, you guys were already used to it. And yeah, like recording everything raw too. Like even with like the Amazon Prime stuff. Like it's gonna be crazy when that stuff comes out uh next month. So <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, because like at the U when you guys played USC, I know, like Jerry Rice, Snoop Dogg, all of them were there. Man, it's crazy, bro. Yeah, you guys have so many stars watching you. What is it like playing for Coach Prime? Um, Coach Prime is definitely a, a hard worker, and uh, he old school. So um, just like I said, the, the foundation of hard work and understanding uh, what it takes to get to the league. I said, obviously, he's, he's been a gold member, ja like gold jacket member. And um, just uh, obviously, yes, he's one of the best to ever play my sport. And um, just – Based on some of his work ethics and uh, like how he, he preaches it to us and tries to just instill some of those those practices into us, um, this is about appliance. And I think that like most of the guys, uh, we've been buying in, and I said obviously not everyone's bought in, but like we've slowly just been like coming together, getting closer. And he said, I said he just he, he stays he sticks with his plans and his words, and like I really uh, just try to soak up everything. Like he just, he, I said he's, he's definitely like. 
uh, it, it feels like he's a motivational speaker or a preacher. That's how it feels to me. <laughs> but it, and it's fun though. I, I enjoy everything. Like it, it, I'm that's how, obviously I'm doing it at home, but it's just been fun just even just having experience all this stuff. So yeah, so he, like you said, you know, he's one of the best to ever play the game. So he has so much knowledge and experience that you just exactly just and then soak it in. Then he's bringing other guys around like Terrell Owens, um, Cosap, like. Man, like we're, we're getting some of the best of the best, literally, and they're coming in here just giving people techniques and stuff. Like that's stuff guys would pay millions for. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, like, I, I, it's definitely been a blessing, and um, just I'm, I'm taking advantage of every opportunity, every situation, and I think that's just what I've gotten out of just playing for him, and like, that's what it's been like, really. And like I, I think that's how I'm going to just continue to keep maximizing just being here. You know. Yeah, like you said, like most guys gotta pay for that, but you know, like you get to be on scholarship playing college football and then like getting okay. all this cool experience. Exactly. Uh, you think he'll bring Tom Brady in? Because wasn't he friends with him? Um, yeah, he's Shador's mentor, so I mean, probably at some point he will. I, I know I'm gonna see Brady at some point. I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. So <laughs> <laughs> that'll be yeah. crazy. No, I set the facts, bro. That'd be insane. What's one of the biggest thing Coach Prime preaches for the team? Um, I mean, obviously, the the I believe, like, it, it really, it's about faith. And I think that's it, having a, the mindset to win and want to win and just believing that you're going to win, um, that's something you hear every single day. And as we're still building our program and building our culture, like, building one culture, becomes, like, it, it starts with having some faith and saying, I believe and believing in what you're doing. Uh, I think it's going to take us a long way. And that's going to just propel us to the top. And I, I know we're going to get to the top, so yeah so it's believing in the whole the rebuild the culture like you take you can't exactly. get where you want to be with if not everyone's on the same page believing that's going to get you to the top exactly i believe this on the, on our bags on our shirts etc like they really practice what they preach so <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was one area you really grew your game in this season um i mean i, I technically was playing a lot of outside linebacker as well in our system so i mean I mean, I, I play DN, of course, so I've been doing that for my entire life. But um, just learning how to drop and, like, carry people and, like, just um, really learning how to be a linebacker. I think that's – I spend more time on um, – you know, I, I, and playing in space, basically. So, uh, I was just say just for our scheme and stuff, like, what they asked me to do, I think I just took time to run the defense and things like that. And, like, just going into next year, I know, like, I have something to build off of. So, I, I just try to put myself in a, a position that's, like – Basically, somewhere, somewhere I can just make that jump from. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense, just from yeah. junior, like our sophomore year to junior year. So, and like you're able to learn like another valuable skill set so that you're not just a defensive it's, end too. Now, exactly, like Make, making myself versatile. Because I mean, if we if we really think about the league, like football is becoming positionless. Uh, like you have to be able to adapt and mold into playing more than one position. If you really think about it, besides like quarterback, obviously, but yeah. But yeah, I, I'm like linemen. I'd be able to move around. Like you can't. Like I feel like a lot of guys they can play like guard, tackle, center, obviously, or like you playing D tackle. You, if you can play three tech or the nose and like, move around or DN playing outside linebacker. Like I said, it's just so much uh, different body types and just like the way football is, is like changing schematically. Like you have to be able to adjust. Yeah, definitely. You like, like guys like Fred Warner. He's able to do a Man, lot, and he's everywhere. I'm like. And obviously he's a wildly linebacker, but it's like he's he's still moving around, covering people, and coming down, hitting in the in the holes when it's a run play, like all that. So it's like I said, you have, really have to be able to just be able to move around and be versatile. So I think I'm working on that, and it's gonna be just nothing but beneficial for me, especially when these uh these 32 teams come look at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hope you lot come April whenever that time is. Man, I pray to God, bro. That's my that's my goal. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, just keep working. You know, you'll be there. Thanks. What was your favorite slash best game this year? Hmm. I really enjoyed the first game at TCU. It just felt like, even because I said based on the um, like the like our fall camp and how everything went, like just to get that first uh, win, first dub on the road, especially on the road, it's hard to win in college football on the road. It was just like a sign. Of, it was a little sigh of relief. Like you know, we we definitely have it and we got it and. I said the belief side of things, and I think like we just got to keep going, keep that going. And I think when we we get back going into the season next year, we have to have that same just energy that we brought that from that very first game for TCU. But um, best game for me, like I say, even stat wise, I mean, obviously I got my first sack versus uh, Arizona State, 
But uh, shoot, Mm-mm. maybe the Oregon State game. I feel like I, I, personally, I think I, I had a really good game. So, and I yeah, I, I want to get the first rounder uh, tackle. So like you know, I just kind of got to test my guns a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to prove that. that. The guy who's gonna be in the league that you can get past by him, literally. Yeah, and Oregon State, a really good team this year. So that's a yeah, great... de- no, they definitely yeah. And I said like those guys like in the, I say in the league in general like it, a lot of guys they they brought their lunch pill and they hard hat this this year in the Pac-12. So I like, hats off to all those teams. Honestly, like they really played really well. So yeah, like, everyone no with the last year of the Pac-12 they all went all out. And then, like they said, that TCU game, that was really cool. I remember I watched that game. It was on Fox, and everyone was, like, going crazy when you guys Yeah, and it's like – and it's going to be – it was the start of something special. And I feel like even next year, it's going to even be more hype than it was this past year. I just know it is. I can just tell, bro. Like <laughs> – Yeah, everyone's – because now that you guys made the jump right from one to four, they're going to – you know, they're going to be hyped, like, being like, oh, how much farther are you going to go this upcoming season? Yeah, exactly. How do you feel about getting ready for the Big Twelve? Um, I mean, we're going back into this basically the same uh conference we came from. Uh, I mean, like that's where they started out the Big Eight, obviously. Then I mean, like my dad played in the Big Eight, so I uh, was option football. It's, it's obviously totally different from nowadays. And that's something he brags about, just how hard it was and stuff. He's like, he, he compares it to the SEC, like how it is nowadays. But I'm like, nah, it's not the same. <laughs> You uh, played but, in the SEC, so you know exactly. I said that's a big dog, man. Like everybody, <laughs> and I think even too, just about I, I changed my appreciation for football, but um, just playing in the in the SEC. But like I said, but the, but the Big Twelve, like it's a, a lot more teams. Like everybody comes from different places and stuff like that. But I think it's gonna be fun too. Just and then the whole, like I said, the landscape of fo- college football is changing. It's becoming like bigger, um, like like super conferences. And then with the whole like college football playoffs are expanding. So like basically you need to get 10 wins to get in basically. And if you're in that top 12, like, Hey bro, you have a chance to go in the national championship, which, Hey, I think we can do that. Yeah. You guys just keep, I mean, you already, like you beat TCU this year. He was in that conference, beat ASU's going in there and, you know, you just keep building and, and hanging in the right direction. You can definitely make a run in the big 12. Exactly. And then you guys get to keep the rival, the new rivalry with Utah. Mm-hmm. How would you say this Colorado program is heading for the future? Uh, I, I guess I, I think we're heading in the right direction. We we definitely just been continuing to just keep getting closer, like off the field, and I think it's going to help us. Um, we I think since everybody was coming from different places this year and stuff, like we still I said obviously we're establishing a culture, but everybody had to get used to each other, and like we really didn't have a lot of time to do that. If you would think about it. Like the flipping a roster to getting guys coming in during the summer and all the freshmen and all the things like that. We still were just continuing to like find ourselves and find out like what our, our team identity was. And uh, we're still doing that, obviously. And we're still rebuilding and finding things, but uh, we're heading in the right direction, I believe. And if, if you really think about it, like some of our, like, all the losses we had were like seven and a half points, like the margin was. So I'm like, we're close. We are very close. Besides, like, what was it? The Oregon, Oregon game and Washington State game, obviously. But like, um, yeah, I think we just we're heading in the right direction for sure. It's just like now we gotta bring it together going into this next season. Yeah, you guys built that chemistry up more now. Like you said, like how you had to flip that whole roster. Some of you guys like transferring in, you know, then but now you guys have that chemistry to build. And like you said, you were close with so many of the games. Like like look at Arizona who made it run and his finish ranked pretty high and you guys only lost by a last second field goal to them. Yeah. And like so many of the games were close. USC you battled with. UCLA you battled with and you know exactly <laughs> what are your goals for this upcoming season um this like I said uh, I told you earlier like, I, I really want to make that jump I really want to just polish my game and be able to just uh, present myself for like so those 32 teams like I really want to be the best at what I do and that's like uh just me continuing this this offseason to get get stronger get bigger um just know my playbook obviously and like I said Clean on the small things I need to do just in order to make like the plays, the big plays and the plays I'm supposed to make. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, you so, know, polish. <laughs> yeah. Like, put, putting the all around finishing touches so you get to the league, you know. Man, I want, and I, I want to get there so bad, bro. I promise you I do. So, yeah, you just keep working and then you'll get there. It's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> then we do another interview when you're in like, <laughs> oh, yeah. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Then the last two questions that I have are just kind of for fun. So first, do you have any any college football stories? Hmm, I got so many. I mean, I got some from Mizzou. I got some from here. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, like like funny or like what? It's just like yeah, funny say, or interesting, whatever you know. You think oh, of- from this year, I'll say when we played Washington State, we stayed in Idaho, and uh, like. Only thing was like our I get, our hotel food wasn't good, and so everybody was going to McDonald's and like it was just funny. You kept seeing everybody just walking back and forth from McDonald's the whole day, and it's just like, you know, it's kind of just funny like just seeing people just like <laughs> kind of fed up with the food. That was hilarious, bro. Honestly, and I bet that was fun for like all the the regular people just at McDonald's like to see you guys like the whole Colorado football team just going in and out. Yeah, exactly. We took pictures with people and stuff and all. It was just, like it was funny though to me. Yeah, I bet like they're all asking, like you say, with the autographs, you know, everyone loves this call. Everyone was like so into you guys, like call Rally, you know, the following yeah, exactly. ESPN, everything. <laughs> right. Then who are some of the cool pros you've gotten to meet or just cool people? Like, like it's just coming up to the facility and things like that. Yeah. Um, like I said, Terrell Owens, obviously, he he can come to the facility. A couple times and like we did you know, build a relationship. I like it's I like, see him casually is crazy because obviously I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm like, dang, bro, you really was doing the thing for us. <laughs> and then like uh I said Coach Sap, he he didn't real cool issue. I got his, his personal number, he called like he'll text me and stuff. Like, that's dude, crazy. But I'm like, bro, that's a Hall of Famer, bro. Like that's such a blessing being around like guys like that, like people that are great at our game, like one of some of the greats of our game. So things like like I'll say them too for sure. Uh who else? Oh, Key Glock, I took a picture with him. I, I didn't post it, but uh, I, I did. I posted, like, on Snapchat or something. But him, Offset. So, like, it's meeting some of the guys. I end up, like, just chopping it up with them and stuff. It's cool. Like, bro, just getting to meet people. Yeah, that's and really just, cool. And you just, like. And I think, like, celebrities, they appreciate, too, like, when they, you treat them like a regular person. You know, people be starstruck and, like, come up to them, like, oh, my gosh, like, you're, you're so-and-so. Like, I, I will say, like, the guys that are in the league or – um, like celebrities like when you do that stuff I, I can tell like I, I mean obviously they're gonna keep the conversation short but like when you kind of make them just feel comfortable and stuff they like that kind of thing I think so yeah like I've heard that like too like like they just want to have like a regular conversation like they don't yeah. want to be asked about their like high like they just want to talk to you like a regular person exactly bro and then when you treat my like regular person like you end up making like, another connection too which is cool but like I say I just that's all I do I always do that I just like I try to make people as comfortable as I can you know <laughs> yeah that's really that cool, one of the guys you've gotten to meet. Yeah. So. But yeah. All right. Thank you for taking the time to join me again. Yeah, bro. Of course. I appreciate you, Nathan. Yeah, thank you.